Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day. before you. We worship you and we thank you for the privilege. And Lord, your wisdom, your counsel, 
your love, all that makes you the everlasting Father, we receive by faith on this altar that, Lord, your grace will work in our lives to be fathers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Worthy is your name. Happy Father's Day, man. Jesus. a surprise for the men at the back but uh, you know we are going to continue the service hallelujah praise the lord please you may be seated <laughs> hallelujah glory 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 to god amen gentlemen let's let's settle down <laughs> praise oh for the daddies we'll, we'll look at that later amen Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Let's just, let's just magnify the Lord in, in the spirit. Just acknowledge God to whom we have come. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the one we sup with. He's the one when he takes us into his presence, he feeds us. He nourishes us. He's the bread of life. He's the one to whom we have come. And so, Lord, we thank you for impartation. We thank you for grace. We thank you for what you have for us today. Take all the glory. Take all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, this morning I want us to open to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. And the Bible says... Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. Whatsoever is born of God, and that should set us thinking that we can be born of God. The Bible says whatsoever is born of God, so that implies people can be born of God. We were all born from our parents. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody here who is alive, you had parents. Amen. Praise God. Even if by test tube. <laughs> Amen. Anyhow. But the Bible challenges us here to understand that we can be born of God. What does that mean? Can God get pregnant? But listen to me. How many dads here were in the labor room? How many people experience labor room? Labor room, labor room dads. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you my own experience. <laughs> you know, after they, 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 they put me on the bed, though, I wasn't the one delivering the baby. I, I, was only, I was only present. The nurse looked at me like they say, they say please, sir, lie down. They took my blood pressure. My blood pressure had gone up. <laughs> labor rooms can be messy 
Labor rooms are not very pleasant. Amen. Praise God. When you look at the face of the woman in labor room, it's not the kind of face you see normally. The cross was God's labor room. The cross. You see that cross? Gethsemane was when labor pains were coming. Gethsemane. Labor pains. The groanings. Christ knew what was coming. He knew, I have to deliver this baby. <laughs> Amen. I can't escape it. You know, sometimes when, when women are in labor, they wish, it can there be another way? He said, not my will, but God, your will be done. And on that cross, we saw Jesus crucified. From the Father's view, from the Father's view, it begins to show you, for every father, it begins to show you what, what God sees when he sees you. Amen. The cross was the labor pains to deliver the new creation through Christ. Hallelujah. And so when we read Isaiah chapter 53, and the Bible says his visage was mad beyond belief, that was what it cost the Father. Amen. That was what it cost the Father. And when the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God, I want you to know, you didn't choose your parents. Is there anybody else? You chose your parents. You said, I want that to be my father. <laughs> is it? No. We, we didn't know. We just came through them. And then we came to understand, oh, this is my dad, this is my mom. Amen. But now we have an opportunity, and it's such a unique opportunity, that God chose us. God has chosen you now. I said, will you accept me as your father? Eh? Are you with me? God went through so much, which is why Romans can tell us in Romans chapter 8, that if you gave Jesus Christ, if God's desire was so battered, if he sweated blood just in labor pains and he went through death just to deliver a new creation, say how much more will he not freely give us all things? Now when we look at this, we, we begin to think, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Why did God go through that? Why did the Father make that sacrifice? He did it so that we can overcome the world. In other words, we have a responsibility now that the Father has done something unique in eternity. You know, some things about God that will never change. He's eternal. What he does is forever. It cannot be changed. The victory of Christ is forever. It cannot be changed. He now says, will you be my son? Hallelujah. So for everyone who accepts Christ, what is happening? You have accepted the adoption to become part of that family. When you read that scripture carefully, it says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. It is participating in a continuous victory. Are you with me? Overcomes. So for the human who is born again, we were born first from our parents. Daddy, mommy, we grew up. A time of consciousness comes 
when God says, you have an opportunity to be born into the Spirit, to join a family of eternal life. Amen. When we make that decision, what happens is we become a continuous participant in the victory of that cross. Hallelujah. What is the world? What is the significance? What does that mean to overcome the world? And so we live in a realm where there is a system that opposes the things of God. In 1 John chapter 2, if you read from verse 15 to 16, the Bible says that all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, these are the things that the world uses to, to have dominion over people. These were the three temptations in the Garden of Eden. These were the three temptations in the wilderness with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? That is in the world. Satan brought it into the world when he fell from heaven. It brought pride. He tempted them with the lust of the eyes. Look at that. The pride of life. You will be as wise as God. That is still in this realm. Praise God. Until Jesus comes the second time. But in the first time, Christ has won the victory because in the wilderness, he won the victory through the word. On the cross, he completed the victory. Hallelujah. And that victory is handed to you when you become a co heir with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So why do I need to overcome the world? Why do I need to overcome the world? You can never live the fullness of your potential and what God has ordained for you if you don't overcome the world. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. We have been looking at that scripture for how many days now? <laughs> Hallelujah. A couple of months ago, we looked at the fact that we are chosen by God. There's no one who is born on this earth who just came. Every human being carries the breath of God. Every human being. Everyone. Every human being. Amen. In the beginning, God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into man. Man became a living soul. So every living soul contains the breath of God. But do you know what it means to have a living soul? Do you understand what it means to have a living soul? What is the breath of God? It's a word from God. So every child, whether Muslim, whether Hindu, whether wherever, every human that is born has something that God has spoken. Many never read it. Many never understand it. Many conform to the culture, to the world, to the environment, and they live a, a whole life and die and never reunited back to the source where they came. Are you following what I'm saying? Christ came to bring that about. And when he came, he not only opened the room 
for our spiritual understanding to be such that we can understand the purpose of life. Because in every human being, there is a divine purpose. There is no, no bastard. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If the child is born, I tell you there's a purpose. Amen? There's a purpose. You can have very confused parents, a confused man and a confused woman, but a, a, a child is a child. There's a divine purpose. There's a breath of God. There is something in, 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 that, in that human spirit. There is something God has written. Many people never know it. Many people never find it. Many people live life trying to become somebody else. They see a movie star. They see somebody singing. They see somebody. They want to dress like that person. They, want to, they never find who they are. The journey of the spirit is becoming who you are destined to be. It's not for you to become anybody else. Because there is nobody else who can be like you. So why, should you, why do you want to become like somebody else? And the only way to find out is to decode what God spoke into your spirit. And you can't decode that until your spirit is open. And the only way your spirit is open is when you receive Jesus. And so receiving Jesus is the beginning of locating destiny. When you receive Jesus, then he said, he said, the Holy Spirit, until Jesus ascended, he couldn't send the Holy Spirit. You know why? You know why? Jesus had to walk on the earth in the fullness of the Holy Spirit to demonstrate that really the Holy Spirit can return and remain inside man. And right now, in the Godhead, we have a human form, in human flesh, sitting in the Godhead. And so now the Holy Spirit can come and dwell in mortal bodies. Praise God. And sometimes we don't understand fully when we start to pray in tongues. Romans chapter 8 tells us, that as we pray in the Holy Ghost, we are bringing the will of God. We are, we are what? Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 28. Amen? Praise God. When you pray in the Spirit, when you pray in tongues, so if you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, there's still something you are missing. When you start to pray in tongues, what happens is that, you know, First Corinthians chapter 2, <coughs> from verse 7, the Bible says that there is a wisdom that is hidden before the ages of the world, ordained for your glory. That wisdom is something your spirit can decode. He says, eyes have not seen it, ears have not heard, neither has it been released into the, hands, into the heart of men what God has prepared for those who love him. He said, but they are revealed by the Spirit. Who searches all things? Yea, the deep things of God. And so the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is to help us decode what is in our spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who can align what God put there originally with what God is saying now. That is why the walk with God is always a walk in present truth. You can't say, you know, this God, uh, I, I, I saw God yesterday. No. There is something for today. That was why the manna, the manna was for each day. God wants that absolute dependence on him. Amen. That's how he created us. He was coming in the cool of the day to refresh them, to, to continue to breathe into that spirit, to continue to breathe into that spirit. So that the reality of his original intention can be enforced and empowered in us. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is the only way to, to live a full life that is rooted in rest. That anxiety becomes non-existent. Because we walk in the fullness 
of, you know what, what uh, Joel said? Joel, Joel said in Joel chapter 2, he talks about the, the army that God raises. He said that army, when they walk on their own path, he said even if they fall on a sword, even if, if, if something happens, he said nothing can hurt them. Nothing can hurt them. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you find that path, when you find that which God has ordained for you, there is nothing in this world that can stop you. Hallelujah. So when the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God, the first thing is to realize what does it mean to be born of God. Can you carry that consciousness? Can you walk? Because many times we tie our identity to our parents. We tie our identity to where we were born. We tie our identity to our profession. We tie our identity to, we tie our identity to many things. But the secret of the overcomer is connecting your identity to your source. I am born of God. Tell somebody, I am born of God. I am born of God. Now, it is, that is the secret that overcomes the world. It is faith in that that overcomes the world. How, 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 does, how does that happen? It says, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. Now, when I talk about faith, you need to understand that in this instance, the instrument by which we became born of God was Christ in the flesh, sacrificing his flesh, shedding his blood. And so the instrument of faith as applied to that scripture, please, I want you to understand this, is not just studying the word. It's not just meditating in the Word. It's a commitment to make the Word in you as operational as it was in Jesus. Because our faith is no longer in it goes beyond the written word. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus. So you want to read the Gospels. What does it say about Jesus? John chapter 17, verse 22, Jesus said the same glory. The same glory. It's not fake. It's not 90%. It's not 80%. It's not 70%. The same glory. Hallelujah, that the Father has given to me, I've given to you. So that becomes the standard. Praise God. Oh, there are great men that I love and, and I, I, I just, just bless. But they are, not, they are not the standard. Are you with me? The standard of what God went through, that labor to deliver, is Jesus. Is Jesus. Is Jesus. Hallelujah. Is Jesus. Is Jesus. So when you say, I am born of God, you want to ask, okay, is there anything that is not like Jesus in me now? Because I can't say, I am born of God. And then I still have secret things, dark things, you know. So it, it challenges you to ask yourself, God, how can I be like you? How can I be like you? You know, as we knelt there as men and we, we faced, you know, we faced the altar, it's very significant because as a man, you have to kneel and face that altar every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. I say, Lord, 
whatever, whatever it takes to be like you. Help me. Amen. It is in the humility of our heart that we receive the grace that flows from the throne. Christ humbled himself and then God highly exalted him and gave him a name above all names. There is a name for you. Amen. There's a name for you. Praise God. There's a name for you. You know, when Jesus was baptized, and I'm going to round up now and do something that God said we should do this morning. When Jesus was baptized in water, heavens opened, the Father spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hallelujah. But later, when he began the ministry, <laughs> and at the time Jesus said, you know, my father, he will never leave me because I do always the things that please with him. The Lord spoke again and said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Hear, hear. Lazarus hard from the grave. The storm hard. Things. It, 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 it. When you are named from heaven, things will hear you. Everything will hear you. you know? It begins with that identification with the purity of the instrument that God used. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. It becomes the object of our faith. It is not the quoting scripture. I can have the scriptures in my head, but the object of my faith, why I have those scriptures is to check myself on a journey of becoming something, of becoming like him. So we don't, we don't mistake, and, and the Holy Spirit becomes the one who guides us, who helps us, who locates which particular scripture. I say, ah, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Look, this is, what, this is what the Bible says. This is what Jesus will do. So don't do that. Do it this way. Amen. That's why he's, he's our helper. Praise God. And this morning we're going to do something. All of us here, amen, praise God. On this, on this Father's Day, the Father's heart is open. Amen. The Father's heart is so wide open. The Father's heart is open. And there are always things in the heart of the Father for each one of us. And two things, you know, that I, I just perceived this morning, that for everyone here, and people are watching us online as well, amen, that there are things that you need to drop at the altar. There, there are things that you are going to say, Lord, because the soul is the place of habit formation. Amen. And there are certain things that are within the soul. They are not sin, but they are just, they are just habits. They are just things you have grown up to do that may hinder the pace the, your speed, spiritually. Amen. Hallelujah. And there are some things in life that we just, we just seem to battle. <laughs> we overcome it, but in the cycle it comes back. We're going to drop it at the Father's feet. <laughs> the Lord, the grace, the grace to be like you, that's what I'm looking for. Amen. The grace to be like you. Now, now, in in the in the first in first John, I need to stop at a point preaching. Amen. But I want to make this point. In in first John, John says something. He said, "The spirit of the Antichrist is the one that does not believe that Jesus came in the flesh." That is. Antichrist. You know what that means. So, for a Christian to be born again and to believe that I cannot live a holy life, you, you are embracing the mind of the Antichrist. Hallelujah. 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 You, you, you may not be there now, but you have to believe. 
If not, why did Jesus die? Jesus did not die to just make believers. He came to raise sons to glory. Hallelujah. So you must believe you can live a holy life. You must believe you can live a consecrated life. You must believe you can live a pure life. You must believe you can live a life that can cleanse your thoughts, you can purify your thoughts, control your thoughts. Amen. Hallelujah. So certain things need to be dropped at the altar today. I say, Father, on this Father's Day, I, I, I drop these issues. And certain things need to be picked up. Amen. Every grace in God, every grace, every gift that you desire, amen, is available today. Rise up to your feet. Rise up to your feet. I want the choir to lead us in worship, very deep worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lead us in worship. And I want us to please not only men, amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes. If there is anything standing in your way, any issue, that seems a struggle for you to overcome today in the presence of the Almighty God, those walls will be shattered. Those problems will be overcome. I want you to believe with me as we believe in the fatherhood of God, the one with whom all things are possible. With God, there are no impossibilities. And you know, with God, don't say, you know, with time. God is able to do things instantly. 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 Hallelujah. Instantly. So lift up your hands to God tonight, yeah, this morning, and, and begin to worship him. Drop everything. Drop the things that have been a struggle. Drop them. Our goal is Christ-likeness. Our goal is to be like him. Our goal is to be witnesses. Witnesses in spirit and in truth. And so, Lord, today we, we stand before the Father of fathers. And we stand as a people, husbands, and wives and families here represented. What are those little, little foxes that is slowing us down? The sins that don't easily beset us. Lord, today we lay them down. We lay them down for the fullness of your glory. The fullness of your glory. The fullness of your glory. Look, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. The heart of men will shake when you see what God has programmed in your spirit. There are people here who have the potential to be billionaires. You know, money is not, you know, money is nothing. Some of the things we struggle for in the physical, it is nothing at all. Because when the vision of God's glory hits your heart, the provision must answer. When Solomon asks for the wisdom of God, he said, you know, when we say Solomon asks for wisdom, Solomon actually asks for a hearing heart. All Solomon asked for was, I want my heart to be plugged to your mouth. Be telling me what I need to do. And God said, I can't be telling you all you need to do and other things don't come with it. Honor will come with it. Wealth will come with it. I, I don't send my wisdom alone. When I send my wisdom, his emissaries will follow him. So it's, it's good to understand priorities. Priorities. Your, your, 
your greatest priority, my greatest priority is first the purity of conscience. To be in a place where the conscience is devoid of offense against anybody. A conscience, a heart that can kneel down and look up at God and worship God from a place, from a genuine place. When that begins to happen, things begin to open on their own accord. You will not need to struggle. You will not, you will not struggle. You will not struggle. You will not pray hard. <laughs> Amen. All your prayers will turn to singing and praise and praise. You know, you just enter one testimony and then as you are praising God, you enter another one, you are praising God. Because he said the part of the righteous as a shining light, you see brighter and brighter, you enjoy greater and greater testimonies, and that is your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. How many people want to enter that? This morning, lay it down, whatever it is, lay it down before the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Lift up your voice and speak to God. Just give me one song, one beautiful song. Just imagine you are coming to the throne of grace. And I want your desire to be not everything that God wants you to be. Lord, I don't want to fall short. I don't want to fall short. Not that alone, moms too can come. Come this morning to make a consecration to walk in the fullness of God's will for your life. The Lord, I consecrate to all that you want me to be. I worship you. Come you. Yes. 
Lord, be exalted this morning. You pour out our hearts in love. Lord, we love you. For everyone watching online, for those who are here this morning, Lord, we pray a divine touch for a divine turnaround that everyone under the sound of my voice will encounter the Father's love more than ever before. But beyond that, Lord, we ask, increase our capacity to love like you. That upon every life represented here, both men and women, that your capacity be enlarged to reflect the glory of God. That that which God has ordained and planned for your life becomes a reality. And so we stake a claim on the goodness of God. It says his thoughts towards us, they are good. They are not evil. By the blood of the Lamb, the power of his spirit we stake our claim on the good in the mind of God and I ask heavens to open over everyone today as we celebrate the great fatherhood of God that into your life shall be an outpouring of the good of God an outpouring of the blessings of God an outpouring of the grace of God and our pouring of the presence of God Amen. in a new way. That as we remind ourselves that we are born of God, we will crave His presence. We will desire His will. We will wait for His counsel. We will delight in His wisdom. Make us true witnesses by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lift up your hands, worship him. We're going to go to the communion now as a seal. Amen. We're going to go to the communion as a seal. Amen. to the communion as a seal. Every man here, I want you to know that we have several offices that we occupy in our lifetime. So being a man, just like women, carry certain graces. When the grace comes to become a husband, you step into an office. That office has a lot of things that govern it. And we must understand how to manage it. When we step into the office of a father, ah, it's another dimension. And so this morning as we go to this table, we put a seal on our consecration, but I also want us to believe God for grace. For grace. Grace, Lord, to fulfill this office. Grace. Grace, Lord, to fulfill this office. According to Psalm 128, that your children and your children's children, they will call you blessed. That, that your children will say, God, I thank you that you brought me into this family. And your grandchildren will say, you know, <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. 
Lord will receive this grace. No man takes it upon him. It's the grace that God gives. Grace. Grace. Grace that God gives. As I want you to know beyond a doubt that as we have worshipped the Lord, as we have, you know, expressed our heart, you know, giving him our love, no one comes before God and returns empty. Amen. 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 Imagine when Queen of Sheba came to Solomon, he brought, she brought things, but when she was going, Solomon gave her more. That's what happens. When you come to God and you, you worship and you, you do all the things you are doing, God always gives. And so today there is something that has poured out from heaven into your life. Amen. Receive it by faith. Amen. Understand that this looks like an ordinary service, but it's not an ordinary service. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll share with the pastors. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's not an ordinary service. So there is something that is flowing from the fatherhood of God into every home today, Amen. into every man. I want you to receive it by faith. Your life and my life, our spiritual journey will not remain the same. Amen. There is an impartation. You will find certain graces. It will be easy for you. Every kind of thing that you are struggling with before, it will be easy to overcome it. Amen. Because of the fatherhood of God. In the name of Jesus. And so Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. In his death, he destroyed our death. He in resurrection, in his resurrection, he brought us into eternal life. And Lord, today we receive all that is in your heart for us as a fellowship, as families, as individuals, in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's partake together.